So, hello everyone. My name is Julia. I'm Jess Lillanery, and today I'm going to do my makeup and talk about the Mueller report, as one does. So, yeah, let's get into it. I have this mirror here, so I'll be looking into this mirror. I also have coffee, which I will be sipping on periodically. I hope that's okay. I just want to start off by talking like more personally about my relationship with the Mueller report and Russian collusion and then I'm going to talk about what happened, the implications of what happened, and what steps I think Democrat leadership should take moving forward. So it's going to be a very fun time. I will be doing my makeup but I probably am not going to be speaking too much about what I'm doing. I'll have all the products listed in the description box below like the good beauty YouTuber that I am. Okay, so let's get rocking and rolling. First, I'm gonna prime my skin and also prime this conversation. So, uh, I was 16 when the Mueller thing started going down because I was 16 when uh, the 2016 election was happening, which was uh, very handy, I'm a 2000s baby. You will always know my age. Um, and so I, first of all, got into politics because I saw what was going on with all of this Russian collusion stuff and I was horrified. Um, I could not, for the life of me, figure out why Donald Trump appeared to be getting away with all of this. Um, things like the meeting in Trump Tower on June 9th um, with Don Jr. and agents of the Russian government. Like, I was like, that's totally a thing. Why aren't we talking about this more? And so when um, it was decided that Robert Mueller was going to be heading this investigation, the special counsel investigation, I was so excited. I was so excited because I thought that justice would finally be served, uh, especially when... Hillary Clinton eventually lost. Um, I was devastated, but I had hope that this man who I knew to be, I don't want to say evil, but who I knew to be shady and awful, uh, was going to face the music at some point. That was very assuring to me uh, in my time of kind of vulnerable vulnerability um especially in the year between the election and when i was 18 and could vote the thought that um there was some guy this Mueller guy behind the scenes working to make sure that trump and his associates um were held accountable for their actions was very comforting to me um in the time that i could not vote uh so Mueller originally got me in politics and um Obviously, eventually, my interests blossomed more than just Russian collusion, but that's definitely how it started. Um, and I'm not going to pretend that it didn't start that way. Um, it's more of a holding leaders accountable for their actions and not a I hate Donald Trump thing. Um, although, I don't like the man. Um, so, last Friday, what day was that? I don't know, last Friday, or no, it was last Thursday night, I was in the common room of my dorm building, um, of my floor, and I saw a tweet from Marcy Wheeler, who is a journalist who is very much involved in this stuff, and I trust her opinion a lot. She's very close to the case, she actually gave information to Mueller about some things um so she knew what she was talking about she knows what she's talking about and she tweeted something i'll try to put the tweet here that suggested to me that the Mueller report was going to be released the next day and at this point there had been musings for weeks that the Mueller report was coming any minute and i so i didn't take it super seriously but i had been saying for the past year and a half, Q1 2019. Q1 2019, we're going to see it. And Q1 2019 was coming to a close and I wanted uh, 
this to be over really um so i was really excited and i started freaking out because the whole existential thought kind of hit me that um it might come back and they say that trump did nothing wrong and that really scared me because i was scared that the last two years of me trying and hoping and waiting for something to come out of this investigation if that was just to be nothing i would i would die i would feel like the reason that i got into politics in the first place is a sham and maybe my interest in politics was also a sham um, and i didn't want that to happen obviously so i was really scared and i started like pacing around the room and like freaking out and i didn't sleep that night because i was so scared it was just not a good time for me and the next day i was on edge all day because no one else seemed to be confirming that the report was going to come out that day no one else was really talking about it there was like mumblings that like they saw Mueller walk into DOJ, but like nothing was really coming out of it. And it was like 4.55 and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna take a nap. Um, and so I went to sleep. I woke up 45 minutes later uh, to like 18 notifications on my phone saying that Mueller had delivered the report to Bill Barr. And I started screaming. And of course it was released five minutes after I went to bed. So we love that, but so I was really excited and spent the rest of the weekend waiting for some information about um, what was in it because at that point we still had no idea what it said. And then that Sunday, um, Bill Barr released his four page summary that, um, went through methodology and then at the end did a little bit about how it was there was no evidence oh sorry he did a whole little bit about how there was no evidence of collusion and um not enough evidence of obstruction of justice to um either indict or exonerate Donald Trump and Alarm bells immediately started going off in my head because Bill Barr is a Trump loyalist and there's no other way to say that. He likes Trump um, and Trump's policy. And for me, at least, I find it hard to trust a man so personally close with Donald Trump to say uh, anything worthwhile about the investigation into Donald Trump that's just me but like I was like how can I be sure that this guy isn't lying uh, we're doing eye stuff now so I'm gonna get closer to the mirror I apologize um and so I took most of the um letter with a grain of salt because I was like I just want to see the report I don't care about what Bill Barr has to say about it I want to see myself and um throughout the following days it became clear that um either Bill that either Bill Barr was hesitant to release the report or he didn't feel like he had the constitutional or like law right to release the report. And again, alarm bells started going off because I I see a man who is close to Trump, who believes in the um, like powers of the president, who wants and so I see a man who is close to Donald Trump, who believes in like deferential powers of the presidency. And I see him saying that he doesn't want to release 
um, the report that apparently, you know, clears Trump's name. And I say, why don't you want to release that? That's what I say. Um, and I don't know why he doesn't want to release it. But he doesn't, clearly. And I think that should make people uh, more on edge than it currently is. Because I, I ask why. Does it really not? Um, is the report less flattering to Trump than we recently believed? Like, that's what we have to ask ourselves. Because he's the attorney general. He doesn't do things for no reason. He's a smart guy, clearly. So you have to ask why. And I was also very, very concerned to learn that the uh, Mueller report's close to 400 pages. Um, which means that he tried to sum up a 400 page document in f like four pages. Um, and I saw a really interesting quote. I forget who it's from. I'll try to find it. And someone said uh, that he's never, it's never taken him 400 pages to say he did, Trump didn't do anything wrong. Um, and why would it be so long if nothing came out of the investigation? If they didn't find anything, why is it so long? And I, I don't know. Uh, I'm not going to like sit here and say like, oh, I think the Mueller report did find evidence of collusion and they just don't want to say anything. Cause like, I don't, I don't know. And I don't think Barr would be so stupid to say that it didn't have anything to do with collusion when it did, especially since the report is going to be released eventually. Um, I'm going to talk about that in a second, but, uh, the report will be released in some part, at least. Um, so I just don't see why Barr would lie when he knows that it would be released. But he could just be twisting the truth a little bit and then just hoping that he doesn't have to release it or that um, if he does release it, everyone will have already, like, like the core public opinion will already have their verdict in. And it won't matter anymore. I guess now we're going to talk about next steps and what I think this means and what I think that uh, Democratic leadership should do now. So Trump started running with this story that he had been exonerated pretty much as soon as William Barr came back with his summary findings, um, which is not true. Uh, he has not been exonerated. In fact, the exact warning was that he has not been exonerated. He just can't be indicted. So... No, Trump, no. But this does kind of free him up to work on other policy agendas, um, which is bad. We should not want him to be, to focus on other policy agendas. This, this is not good. There's now some fear that um, the Affordable Care Act could be in jeopardy. Uh, but... This morning, uh, the White House released that they weren't going to focus on that until after 2020, which assumes that Trump gets reelected. Um, but so that's good. That seems to be fine for now. But also seems like he's focusing on border border policy, um, which is also not very good. Um, and you know, the last two years of his presidency were kind of marred by the fact that. Um, he couldn't really do anything because there's this cloud of suspicion around him at all times. And I fear what he could do that, that now that the cloud is gone. Um, and uh, I really hope that uh, people start to want to take down these policies because of the policy and not just because scary Trump collusion and... Yeah, I just hope people um, start to see the policy as just as bad as the man behind the policy. Oh, actually, let's just take a little detour and talk about this blush. So I ordered it in like August and it was all well and good until I dropped it. And this side broke. So this used to be two different colors. So I had this like, I had this like peachy color on that side. And then there was a lighter highlight shade on that side. So the lighter highlight shade broke. Um, so I repressed it and then the other side broke and then I repressed that and now it's just like crumbs and I don't know what to do. So I'm trying to like 
should really use it. I'm trying to put it in my crease today. Let's see how this goes. Um, so yeah, what I think that Democratic leadership should do. Um, a survey, I believe Washington Post did it? I'm not sure. Someone did a um, survey of Americans and asked them what they thought about the um, Mueller report. And I believe it was like either like 80 or 90 percent of Americans said that they want to read the full Mueller report. Um, and that just goes to show that Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, y'all need to subpoena that shit and do it fast because everyone wants to read it. No one wants to be left in the dark. Um, no one wants to read Bill Barr's watered down summary redacted every other fucking word no one wants that everyone wants the full report so try to get the full report if you can that is the number one thing that democrats should do right now um i think that um if Barr is even a little hesitant about delivering the full report you subpoena it and right now he's a little hesitant about delivering the full report. So I think you should already be subpoenaing it. Um, but as of yesterday, there were talks that that was exactly what was going to happen. So good on you, House Democrats. Good on you. Um, but other than that, I don't actually think that... Well, impeachment proceedings are still not out of the question. Um, and I wouldn't want them to be out of the question because he, Trump has done shady shit. However, um, I don't think that that should be our number one priority. Uh, we have really cool policy that we should be trying to get passed before 2020. Um, and we should be focusing on that rather than, um, trying to nail Trump on this. Especially since if we have good policy and we do good things with the rest of this term, uh, that should shine through and help us get elected next cycle. Um, however, there was enough to impeach President Trump before the Mueller report came out. There is enough to impeach President Trump now. Um, so I think that if one house democrat wants to take that on as their noble cause go for it um i think that he could be impeached he definitely won't be removed but we could try uh i think that leaders should be held accountable and if that's how we're going to hold him accountable that's what we should do um yeah, it's just, I just don't want my leaders to waste political capital on that. That just doesn't seem like a good use of time right now. Um, and Nancy Pelosi also thinks that. So it will be interesting to see what happens. Um, I just am glad that we can't rely that so for the past couple of years like the Mueller report has been her heralded as this like like the next coming of Jesus Christ like as soon as the Mueller report drops everything will be okay and like that was never going to happen. Uh, that was just setting up the Mueller report to fail. Big time. Um, so I'm kind of glad that we can't use the Mueller report as an excuse anymore. That we can't say, oh, well, we're not going to do that yet because we want to wait for the Mueller report to drop. And we don't want to, like, get involved with that yet because we won't wait for the Mueller report to drop. Like... The Mueller report has dropped, and now you can start doing all those things that you said you would do. Because it's here. It happened. 
it was never going to be this insane smoking gun. That was never going to happen. I thought that the very most they were going to nail John Jr. and Jared Kushner. They didn't do that, apparently. Um, so, like, we just gotta move on now and, like, start focusing on the things that Americans actually care about, like healthcare, infrastructure, jobs. I know, crazy ideas, right? Uh, and and we can totally keep talking about Russian collusion and Russian involvement in the U.S. election because that's still a huge story and still something we need to talk about because they're probably going to try to interfere in the 2020 election as well. So we can't just forget about that and drop it. We also have to realize that 2016 was three years ago now and Donald Trump was elected president and we can't go back and undo that. So we have to make the most of the situation that we're in right now. And that means that we need to fight against his bad policy agendas. We need to mobilize voters for 2020. We need to use this democratic primary process as a way to field the best candidates that will support our policies while also have the best chance of defeating Trump, whomever that is. And then once that person is decided, we need to all rally behind them and make sure that they have the resources and funds to defeat Donald Trump in 2020. I think, you know, the Mueller, the real Mueller report were the friends that we made along the way. And those friends are the 2018 midterm elections and the amazing people that we elected to office that year, including Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, Rashida Tlaib, Ilan Omar, and many, many, many others. Uh, the real Mueller report is the fact that we have great Democratic candidates for president, including Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. We have amazing policy that's being talked about, like single-payer health care, universal basic income, reparations, all of these amazing things are finally being talked about. We have people who are speaking out against the atrocities of the border. They're speaking out against horrible, racist, Islamophobic, and terrible policy. There are people speaking out against the wars in the Middle East and how much damage we're doing there. This is great and it's not, and it's, this is great and it's all happening because we're standing in solidarity against Trump and that's because of the Mueller report. So thank you Bob Mueller for helping us realize that we have checks against the president for a reason. And we have the ability to check him. And we should check him or her. Because being president doesn't mean you shouldn't be held accountable. And the Mueller report was a test in accountability. And we tried super hard. Um, and we succeeded. The report was never interfered with. The report was fair. No one can argue that the report was biased anyway. And that is, that's huge. We allowed Robert Mueller to complete his work for two years, 18 months, whatever. Um, and that was a Democratic victory. I'm really proud of like the American public for having enough patience to see that through. I'm really proud of um, political leaders for having faith in their Mueller report, even in you know the months where we didn't hear anything about it. Um, and now I guess we just have to wait until we have more information about what was actually said in the report. Um, which I'm very interested to sit down and read all of. 
Um, so that's all I really have to say, and I'll just put it in highlighter. Um, I'm confident that this happened for a reason, and I'm hopeful that uh, in the future we can overcome this and like, you know, like solidarity. Woo! So that was my thoughts on the Miller Report. This is my makeup look. I'm Julia. I'm just a little nerdy. I'm gonna put my glasses back on. See you guys later.